to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about how to use dry mix in order to graph variables. Say I have this experiment, and uh, I want to see if the number of reps per week affect the max bench press. And I've collected some data, and um, I have reps per week. I have 20, not really working out real hard, are they? 20 reps, then 30, then 40, then 70. And then this is uh, how what their max bench press is. So now I'd like to graph this so that I have a visual representation of the data. So what I can use is a, an expression called dry mix to help me to remember how to set up the graph um, properly. And the dry stands for dependent responding, and this goes on the y axis and then mix is manipulated independent and y and excuse me and then x axis okay so the next thing i would need to do is identify which is the independent and which is the dependent and the reps is what i'm manipulating it's what i'm trying to see will make a difference so the reps is the independent and the max, and it's also measurable, the max would be the dependent because it depends on the number of reps you do each week. So now that I have the variables uh, identified as independent and dependent, I then just set up my graph. And I went ahead to save some time, went ahead and set uh, some numbers down. So the independent, I go over to the mix, and independent is the x-axis. So this will be the number of reps, okay? And this would be per week, okay? And then the dependent goes on the y-axis, and so this would be the max bench press, okay? I'll just call it max bench. Okay, and then what all you do is simply start graphing from there. And now you have the two, your x and your y-axis set up properly, and then I'll, I can go ahead and graph real fast so you see what it looks like. I'll do this very quickly. And we have 30, 145. Okay, and then 40 to 165. Okay. And then, um, let's see, and then we got 70 goes to 220. Okay. And then you could either connect them or do whatever you'd like. But the main thing is you have the X and the Y set up properly. Let's go ahead and look at one other example. Um, let's see, we'll go to the YouTube world, and we have the number of uploads a week and the number of YouTube. So again, I've got dry mix, okay, and I want to figure out, um, first thing I need to do is identify which is the independent, which is the dependent. Well, the uploads is what I'm, uh, I can manipulate, because if you've ever tried to, um, control YouTube, uh, you can't really manipulate the number of views, but you can control the number of uploads. So this would be your what you're manipulating. This would be your independent, and the views are your dependent. Okay. Again, I've got it set up. The independent is dry mix. Independent goes on the x-axis, so this will be uploads. Okay, per week, and then your dependent views would go on the y-axis. Again, the way I remember the y-axis is if you write a y, uh, you know that you have this that kind of looks like it's a vertical uh, vertical shape there. So again, and now all I, would, all I would do, now that I have my y and x-axis set up properly, I then just graph, okay? And so I'll go 1 to 30 and 3 to 50, uh, 5 to... 80, it's kind of narrow right in there, and then 25 and 100, and 45 and 150, okay, 45, 150, and again, you can connect them or do whatever you'd like with that data, okay, again, in review, you have dry mix, the D stands for dependent, okay, and I'll probably shorten this, the R is responding, the Y is the Y axis, and then the mix is M is manipulated, I is independent, and the X is axis. Hope that helps with graphing variables.
on a graphing variables and dry mix. Thanks for watching. Moo Moo Math uploads a new math video every day.